guys, welcome back to the channel. It is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you hopping on and seeing what I am up to today. So in today's video, yes, it is late summer into early fall and the sunflowers are out. Oh my goodness. I if that if I had a favorite flower, that is it, sunflowers. So in today's video, I am bringing you ways to easily transform secondhand finds in some beautiful fall decor using lots of sunflower ideas. So we're going to start right off with today's first project in removing this hand painted rooster on this crock. So they are typically just a hobbyist piece and it's really simple. All you do is just soak it in hot water, just hot water, Dawn dish soap. Let it sit for 10, 15 minutes. It, the crock is glazed, so you, the paint, the acrylic, whatever the person used to paint on it, is never usually beyond that glazing. So just a scraping tool and it'll come right off. I actually have two crocs that I'm going to be working on today and I have sunflowers that I used in the past and I just purchased these images off of Etsy last year. They are perfect for this time of year. My favorite little end of summer into fall sunflower season. So all I do is take them out of my downloads. They come up in pages, then I copy and paste it into my Excel program. That way I can size it to the item that I am doing it on. So two different images, two different Crocs, and look at this neat little contraption that viewer Tracy sent me. Now usually I'll use a couple towels rolled up or the sticky lint brushes to prevent my round objects from rolling but what a nice thing to send me and the nice thing is it doesn't take up very much room at all so shout out to Tracy for thinking of me and sending me this. So now I have two crocs that I'm working on, so two different images I'm using. So all this is is regular old copy paper, nothing fancy. I just have a regular printer that I printed it out on. I just sized it to what size I thought would fit this croc and it fits out perfectly. So now all I'm going to do is use some Mod Podge on the back of it, just trying to do, uh, you know, a generous amount, but not too much that squishes off to the sides. And then before the Mod Podge dries, I go around the edges, make sure that it is straight. I can shift it just a little bit, but you got to be careful because that paper's wet so it might tear. So now I'm just doing my second image, same size crock. On one of them, I didn't have to remove anything. So I thought, you know, I have two different images, so why not make two different ones? Now to seal my paper in, I'm just going to go ahead and do a coat of clear coat. You can put another layer of Mod Podge over it. That also will seal it in. Also, I just wanted this to be a little bit more water tight just in case somebody uses this for a vase or something. And I always forget to grab, I do have a bottle of the water food safe one of the Mod Podge, but for some reason I always forget to grab that one. So next up is the bell paper by Redesign. Oh my goodness, look at, we got a roll full of amazing sunflowers. So, oh, now to decide which ones I want to use. I actually have two white jugs that I had in my own decor, changed my decor around. I had actually done the same thing where I had taken off the image that was on them. So they're already plain and ready to go. 
The hardest part is picking out one of these beautiful sunflowers that will fit. So, and I want the stem to go all the way to the bottom. So, yep, loving this, Tracy. Thank you so much. It is really just stabilizing these round objects perfectly. So if you've not used a transfer before, one side is sticky. It's kind of like it is paint that you are transferring onto an object. So you don't want to really pre-stick it because once you start to stick it to the object, it's already started to stick. So you have one chance pretty much. So yep, once I got it eyeballed centered, now I've already kind of attached that stickiness on there and now it's just time to rub it up dub. <laughs> So, yep, they usually come with some sort of a stick. And as you can see, once the, the image starts to come off that hard plastic outer, it kind of looks chalky and that way you know that it is transferred on. So you just really need to get it started. And then once I've got it all applied, I can start lifting off that top layer. And then to seal this transfer in, you can use a natural clear wax. I'm going to go ahead and use that same clear spray. Something needs to seal this in. It's like really dry paint. And if you don't seal it in with something and you go to use water, you might be washing off your image. Next up, I'm doing a yet again another crock. This is one of our auction finds. And as you see, it had been painted green. So same process, even though this one was not that glossy glaze. So it did take a little bit more elbow grease to get the green off. A little bit of scrubbing with some scouring pads to get the underneath of yellow off. And then voila. Yeah, the power of editing, look at that. It is nice and clear now. Well, unpainted now. So let's start by changing this one up and getting a sunflower on this one, sticking with our theme. Yes, this one did not have any sort of lid. It's that perfectly imperfect. All the paint didn't necessarily come off, but I love that perfectly imperfect. And I love the IOD sunflower mold. So I am super happy to give this a try. Now, a lot of times I do use the IOD clay, but I wanted to give the chance to try out, since this is such a big mold, I'm going to be using just Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. So this is a little bit time consuming to get all the glue into the crevices. Not too time consuming as letting air dry clay dry, but um, yeah, so let's give this a try. The hot glue worked wonderfully. If you have any air bubbles or any holes, just go back in and put it back in the mold and fill in those <laughs> holes if you see any. So now I've got this hot glue mold. So let's paint it up to look like a sunflower. So I have some of the Waverly chalk paints. I'm lucky enough that our our Walmart still carries them. So, and I actually bought these last year to do some fall colors. So we've got orange, we got yellow and a brown color. So we will just start having fun shading away on this mold. And I, it, the hot glue picked up the details just as much as the air dry clay has. When blending colors and trying to make that soft color, 
I find it's best to work with all the paints while they are still wet. So as you see, I'm overlapping the orange right on top of that yellow. And then I have just a stencil brush from the Dollar Tree store to just blend it away. Now that I have my brown in the middle, what I'm doing is kind of off <laughs> taking some of that stencil brush and trying to get some of the paint off. The mold is not a pore surface. It is not going to soak in any of that paint. So I'm just the same thing. I'm trying to do that dry brush technique and fade it out. And I know it probably is like, oh my gosh, it's so brown. But the fun of doing this type of technique is you just keep removing and adding paint until you love it. And then I set it off to the side and let my paint completely dry before sealing it in with that clear top coat. I'm just by chance using the Crayon one, trying to use this can up, but you could use polycrylic, Rust-Oleum's top coat, whatever you have on hand. Now I made sure that my top coat was good and dry before adhering it. Oh my gosh, isn't that not gorgeous? I'm patting myself on the back because I really like how my sunflower turned out. I didn't want it to be too awful yellow only because I wanted it to, to pop on this crock. So the hot mold is definitely bendable. So I'm just gonna be using some Gorilla Glue clear glue to adhere it to the crock. And then to act as a clamp, I'm just using packing tape. I'm pulling it nice and tight so that all the edges are down. Now I did notice that I kept kind of checking on it. It did actually take overnight to dry. Um, probably one because I had tape and I probably used way too much glue, but I wanted to make sure that it was going to adhere. So I did have some leakage coming out, but I just removed the tape. I just cleaned that off while it was still a little bit tacky, but I rather have it be on there <laughs> than a piece of it coming off. So for the first hour or so, yeah, it did not dry in an hour by any means. So next up is this clear gallon jug. So Yes, <laughs> this is one of those things that you always spy when you're out thrifting. You're like, oh, I need that. I need that. I need that. It's a rare find. <laughs> and then you bring it home and you have to decide what you're going to do with it because usually nobody buys them in your booth as, as is just clear. <laughs> so I wanted to do the inside of this brown because I wanted to put a sunflower on this too. Even though I could have put a sunflower on it clear, I still didn't think it was going to have that pop. So I went to Pinterest. I saw where somebody had taken brown paint and alcohol and mixed it together and swirled it around the inside of their glass bottle. So I'm going to try that for the first time. Now I know that you could use like food coloring, but I'm interested to see if the paint trick works. Now paint is definitely thicker than food coloring, so it took a little while to get it to swirl down and get some of the excess out. So hopefully it will dry well. So now I'm actually using these beautiful, now I'm switching over to the IOD 
transfers. So there's always that, which ones do you like better? I love them both. And yes, the Prima ones, you kind of do see an outline if you're doing a dark surface on the edge, but since I did a white surface, you don't see that. And there's no outer edge on the IODs. The process for applying it is the same. It is sticky, so you can leave the underneath paper if you want while you're applying it and gingerly remove it. Or since this is such a small object, I'm just going for it. And then you got that rub-a-dub-dub -dub, giving your wrist and your fingers a workout to get it transferred on. But luckily when it comes to this type of like glass or anything like that, it really does stick well. So you know the fun of secondhand finds is I always have something I can work on. So uh, this piece of round I've had for a while, I didn't stain it. I got it that way at a garage sale. It, this is just how it was. So it's already pre-stained with a dark, pretty color. So waiting for inspiration, I thought, you know, a lot of people do these for their front doors. So I'm like, perfect, I can totally do this with some sunflowers. So I want to do a half and half, so I'm going to tape off and, and paint the bottom half white. coats of white later I achieved the white that I was looking for let's see if I rubbed on that masking tape enough that I have a nice crisp line you just never know sometimes but it's looking good now the Primo ones have a ton of sunflowers in it so I had plenty to do those jugs I have plenty to do this round I'm also going to be adding this Welcome Galvanized from the Dollar Tree store. So I think this is really going to be beautiful. I can't wait to get it all attached. Now I wanna make sure that my welcome stays on, especially if somebody does use this in the front door or maybe on the porch and it's in the weather. I'm just not secure that just gluing that galvanized onto this wood will keep it on. So what I'm gonna do is I have little nails that I'm actually going to nail it on with, but I'm going to have to pre-drill with a metal bit through that galvanized first to give myself a little bit of hole. The, yeah, the, the nails unfortunately won't just go through the metal. actually put quite a few of those little nails in there anywhere I thought that that metal would lift. So now that I have that attached I'm going to go ahead and seal this all in using some polycrylic. I know the polycrylic will be more outdoor safe than maybe the crayon. I'm not really sure but for this wood I just switched over to the polycrylic. And when my polycrylic was dry, I'm going to flip this over. I'm just going to use a couple eyelet hooks and a piece of 17 gauge wire. That way it is all ready for somebody to hang when they purchase it. So 
Oh, I loved this estate sale find. Look, it, it's an old window. I don't have to strip anything off. It already has a mirror on it. It has glass in it. So perfect. One of the questions I always get when I'm doing the mirror effect windows is, how do you do and will it, would you do and show how to remove mirrors to make it look aged? And I will just share right off the bat with you, doing the mirror effect on glass is easier than taking the paint off a of back of a mirror but i will go ahead and share it with you i have done these in the past so yep so you have to strip that back paint off it doesn't really want to come off just like paint doesn't want to come off furniture but yes so i just have some of the citrus strip i just am going to brush a thick coating on i'm going to go ahead and cover the whole surface i taped off the wood to protect the wood and then after I get it all coated, I will cover it up with strain wrap and I will walk away just like you do any other stripper and let the stripper work its magic. And at the two hour mark, the paint wasn't even budging. So I waited another two hours. So four hours total wait time. And then as you see, it was just pulling off. You're waiting for that crinkle, that bubbling effect to happen. And for some reason, it doesn't remove that mirror that's underneath that paint. I really don't know why. I am not a chemist, but that's what it does. So I'm just taking, when you're taking the paint off, you want to make sure that you're using a plastic scraper. So I just have one of those old Pamper Chef scraping tools to use. Because if you use anything metal, you're going to scratch your glass. Now that I've scraped most of it off, I'm just going back in with a wet rag and just trying to remove as much of the stripper as I can. It is a definitely a messy job. And now I have a spray bottle with 50% bleach, Clorox bleach, and 50% water. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of like what I do with the mirror effect when I have vinegar and water that prevents the mirror effect from sticking, this bleach water is actually going to make those spots in this mirror. So you kind of just hang out and wait. And as you see, you start to see dark spots where the bleach is eating away through that mirror effect and it gives you that fabulous aged look. So just let it do what it needs to do. And when you see all the black spots and you're ready to remove the bleach droplets, you just take some paper towel and just dab at it. You don't want to rub because you'd make rubbing marks. You just want to dab it off. Now that I removed the bleach drops, I let it completely dry and I'm going back in with some black paint and I'm just using Waverly inks black paint just something to have a back layer so that you don't see the paper i'm going to back this with some paper that you don't see all the way through those clear spots now to protect the backs of my wall decor especially when it's painted like this i like to use contractor's paper we use these to cover up our work tables in our shop i do it for pretty much every wall decor that i make just gives it that nice finished look. So all I do is run a bead of hot glue along the edge. I try to cut a piece of the paper off as size appropriate as I can. I'm not ever too worried because once I get it attached and it's all hot glued on, it's nice and tight, it's thick paper. And all I do is take some sandpaper and make a nice clean edge. No, I'm not just gonna leave this as is. I'm gonna give it one more cleaning. The front of these one more cleaning with some Norwex cloths. Isn't that just beautiful? Seeing all that age, you can do as little, as much as you want. I think people still kind of want to see themselves in the mirror, so I didn't go overboard with the taking the mirror off. Now that I have my mirror all cleaned up, I have a nice clean surface to work with. Yes, we're going to be using some more of those IOD sunflowers. As you see, I have a theme going on here and I just absolutely love these sunflowers. So I couldn't wait to find the perfect piece, which I think this is the perfect piece to put them on. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and cut every single one of the sunflowers out. Every single one of the leaves, I'm going to need some extra stems and I'm going to run these sunflowers along the side of this window. So I want the sunflower to look like it's continuously growing up between the two panes. So I'm going to cut that stem in the middle and then try to match it up <laughs> from the bottom piece to the top.
Now after adding a couple leaves to just give it a little bit more realistic effect, I decided just to go with two on each side, not to crowd the mirror because I, as I said, I wanted them to be able to use the mirror. You, I could have added writing or anything like that with a stencil, but no, I just kind of like it as is. So now I need to seal in my transfers. So I'm going along with some Annie Salone clear wax. And the nice thing about the wax is it seals in that transfer, but using Norex cloths, I can get it off the glass itself. Now my last step is to add a hanging system. I like these eyelet hangers that I get off of Amazon in a multi-pack. And then when it comes to old windows and old wood like that, once I get my 17 gauge wire on and I get it all twisted, I like to give it a good yank to make sure that I'm not in any weak wood. Just because that's where I want my hanger to be sometimes. Yes, I've had it happen where I pull on it and the hanger system comes out. So just always double check that it is in some good solid wood. Welcome to the life of a crafter. <laughs> Always expect the unexpected. Yep, when I went to flip and take a piece, peek at how it was turning out. Yes, this was a homemade. They didn't use proper little... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so yep, it flipped over. Probably the motion of playing with it to get the stripper on. Yep, it fell out. So luckily we did have... A piece of mirror from another that my sweet husband Chris is going to cut me another piece. And so there you go, four hours again, waiting for paint to be removed on the back. And with the power of editing, I could have just not even said anything. But sometimes it just feels good to share the traumas that happen of DIYs. So thank you for watching today's video. And what did you think? Oh my goodness, from easier as easy as printing off a label a p on a piece of paper from a download of Etsy. There's Graphics Fairy. There's all those other free sites. That's just the one that I had from last year and I absolutely love it. Along with Redesign and we have IOD, the transfers. Yes, they make easy transformations and oh, I am always in love with IOD's sunflower molds. Oh my goodness, a great investment, y'all. <laughs> I just oh, love that. And doing the hot um, glue, oh my gosh, yes, it worked out perfectly. It was bendable, cost efficient, yes. So great way to transform an old crock that's yeah, a little bit worse for wear, but we love that perfectly imperfect here on our channel. So let me know what you think. Yes, I know y'all that window, mirror window. Yes, if you stayed to the end, you saw that part of it broke. So that's the part of having a stash as a flipper is saving pieces of parts from other projects because you just never know when you're going to need them. And I needed that. Oh my gosh, that just ruined my whole vision. But you know what? I'm not going to let it down. I'm going to work with what God gave me. And okay, like how can I fix this? Thank you very much for having that piece of glass to complete the project and my vision for those beautiful sunflowers. So thanks again for watching, guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we have uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!